The New York Times promises readers that it will cover the news as impartially as possible, but it consistently breaks that promise in news reports on the Arab-Israeli conflict. In October alone, New York Times reporters obsessively editorialized against Israeli government figures, inserting derisive language into what are supposed to be objective news stories. In various reports, leaders were described as shrill, stubborn, strident, abrasive, and cynical. In November, a news article went so far as to claim Israeli leader Benjamin Netanyahu is best known for, and perhaps best at, speaking out in strident tones. Another accused a senior cabinet minister of having distorted details of a potential US nuclear deal with Iran, simply because he, like other serious analysts, worries sanctions relief would likely continue beyond the six months governed by the agreement. Yet another November article, again a news story, raised the question of whether Israel is guilty of hopeless hypocrisy for opposing continued enrichment by Iran. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, by contrast, is described as conciliatory, while inaccurate anti-Jewish assertions in Hamas textbooks are meekly labelled as questionable. And when a Palestinian stabbed a teenage Israeli soldier who was sleeping on a public bus, a Times photo presented the killer's family as the primary victims. Of course, the conflict is hardly as black and white as the New York Times pretends. Abbas this year described a Palestinian leader who allied himself with Hitler as a hero and called on Palestinians to continue on the path of terrorists responsible for the murder of hundreds of innocent men, women and children. The New York Times didn't characterise that inflammatory speech as strident. In fact, it completely ignored this portion of the speech. And those questionable Hamas textbooks? They praise anti-Jewish violence, deny any Jewish connection to Israel, and assert that Judaism's holy books are fabricated. That's far beyond questionable. If anything, it is these claims that are strident, cynical, and abrasive. No other country is treated this way in the news pages of the New York Times. So why, when it comes to Israel, do the news pages behave like the opinion pages?